we are discussing a very simple um, topic, most especially from the Association of African Universities when we organize workshops and critical issues come out. The participants will tell us, we wish you organize a, 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 no, a common platform where the VCs will be there and will tell them what we think. But surprisingly, when you create that platform, like what Natasha said, they all ask diplomatic questions. <laughs> because if you ask any difficult questions, you come back and meet me in the university. But we are privileged to have some policy makers here. And I think that what we've learned right from day one in PEDAL, we have the opportunity to ask them the difficult questions and demand answers that will support the work that we do. And so the first to be introduced is Dr. Julius Zwan, or Juan, and he is a CEO KICD to join us. Let's put our hands together for him. The next is Dr. Cyrus. Okay, I think I need glasses. I shouldn't worry, thank you so much. And he is also representing the Ugandan Council for Higher Education. And then we have Professor Bonaventure Rutinwa, and he's a DVC, University of Dar es Salaam. And then Professor Jonathan Babalola, and he is a provost of the College of Postgraduate Studies, University of Ibadan. Okay, so this is going to be an interactive session. I may just ask them two or three questions and I open the floor so that um, if you have burning questions and critical issues you want us to look at, we can rightly do so. All right, but I would like to start um, from the, the first one I did. I, there were two critical issues that came out, which is very much important for policy makers. I may paraphrase them and I hope that I, I got them right. The first one had to do with the fact that they wanted, or we want, our university or education system to be much more flexible. And that will help us implement the very things that we are doing as PEDAL. I remember just last two weeks, we interviewed some student interns. And they are reading IT, that is information technology. We asked them, did you write any exams on programming last semester? They said yes. How did you write it? They did programming exams on paper. <laughs> programming. I, I know the IT guys, for those who are, you know, how can you do programming examination? Level 200, 300 on paper, while the laptops and the computers were just home, sleeping. A whole lot of things. How will we be able to, to have that environment, a free environment to do examinations and, and critical things in the university as well. Number two, one thing that came out strongly was that can we give similar credit to teaching just as we do for, for research in terms of promotion? I don't know if, if we all we, we heard it. Did we? Did we hear that one? Yes. That we need to give much more credit to teaching excellence in as much as we want to look at um, research in terms of promotion. With these two key things, we want to open the floor for you to give us um, take-homes and tangible things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I will start with the flexibility issue. Um, we have various types of people with various standards. The moment you allow things to be very, very flexible, you will run into problem of quality. And that is why most universities are regulating agencies to set the minimum standards. I mean the minimum standard, which I believe is very, very important and is very, very good. Mm -hmm. Even in some cases where you have minimum standard, you see some who are far, far below and yet they will be the first to get accreditation. So when you now come to a level of now say, okay, you are flexible, then you probably see much more terrible things. I believe that, um, well, as a scientist, if you have a goat and you have a peg, the best you can do, if you don't want him to go outside that ring, is to tie a rope to his neck. So he has a band he can get to, and on the other one, he has to be very close to you. Mm. So having a minimum standard, I believe, is very, very important. Now, within that range, we can make something very flexible. Mm. Education in Africa is rigid. Yeah. 
in Europe is flexible. In um, the Norwegians, they said that they don't start as early as we do. These days, you see children who are two, three, already doing things that they ought to be doing at primary three or four. Mm. Instead of learning some other skills, they ought to learn when they are young. But you know, in the know in Norwegian, what they do is that they allow them to play. They learn at their own pace. We don't do that. We struggle. We rush. So I believe that it would be good if there's flexibility, but there must be a minimum standard that everybody will need to follow. Um, that answers that. Mm. About um, teaching and research, well, I'm talking as a person, not in my position as a provost. I believe that for you to be a good teacher, you must be a good researcher. So if you are not a good researcher, you cannot be a good teacher. And if you are a good researcher, you may not be a good teacher. So I believe the two components needs to come in. The fact is, if you have been employed to teach, if you have not taught well to certain level, you should not be promoted irrespective of your publications. So that should be the, the you should have a minimum score for teaching. But if somebody is a very good teacher, it could be teaching nonsense. It couldn't, it's possible. Yeah, that's right. It, it's possible that you have somebody who's teaching, but the things he's been teaching are things that are already very, very outdated. Mm. No, we still see the other teacher who will pick books that were published in 1970 and will come to class and teach students the art is flat. <laughs> he has taught well. Students understood the art is flat. But it's not been reading, it's not been doing current, it's not current in research. Even in my field, nothing's changed actually every day. You get to class and I say they are in state of matter. No, it's not gone beyond that. We are four. The fourth one, I'm so many scientists are not aware because they are not current. So the reality is that teaching should be a benchmark okay. for allowing promotion. But I think the issue of research is still very, very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you raised um, debatable um, issues when you open the floor. We have a lot of people who would, so they are, they are, they are eager to, 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 to react. But let's listen to the second speaker okay. on the two well, premises. I, I don't think I understood the first question. Okay. But given that the intervention, the only answer what you have understood. <laughs> so the question is, what do you think about? Uh, my name is Sayura Sayura Sophia. I work with the National Council for Education and I do head. Uh, the unit responsible for uh, for the standards. Issue number two, I think as the National Council for Education have been flexible enough. Uh, three areas of universities really responsible for teaching, research, and community service. We have noted it already. I think mm -hmm. last year I said in the, I said in the program that uh, when we bought the benchmarks for KGD program in Uganda, we included a unit for every, doesn't matter where it was. It's a requirement in Uganda that when somebody is undertaking a PhD program, they must undergo a pedagogical skills training. Mm. That's what we, uh, we have. And if you are a university from Uganda and you are here and your PhD program doesn't include this, uh, this unit, you better inform me now and I can see how we can withdraw the accreditation of the program. <laughs> uh, 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 then another thing arising out of uh, out of the uh, the feedback we got we get from so I did visit a university offering engineering in Uganda and the students say you have excellent engineers but they cannot deliver. Mm -hmm. This was feedback from the students. We took a lot of it. And now Mr. Moderator, we are reviewing our our standard on promotion of staff within the university, which is, uh, which is a, 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 a standard, a kind of minimum standard for promotion and recruitment of lecturers or professors. And actually we are requiring it now. Our council has already passed that the pedagogy is a requirement for every person teaching within the university, starting at the level of a lecturer. We are not saying that we should not employ them, but the moment they are employed, Within a time like six months, the university. Now, the responsibility is to a university to ensure that this person has undergone 
through a pedagogical uh, uh, training. Uh, so it is, it's, it's, it's a requirement now for, for National Council for Higher Education. Uh, allow me to make mention of the promotion of criteria. Mm. Yes, it is still part of the promotion criteria, but as, as, as my colleague has said it here, I have a challenge. And uh, as a person in charge of standards, I want, and, and I'm, I'm actually looking for my aha moment. And this is, I've not got an opportunity. The one in Nairobi, the one in Entebbe, and now we're here. And I'm giving it to you, the federal team here. Uh, can you construct for me a criteria for promotion of academic staff within the universities? For well, the only thing that we have, for research, it is easy. It, is, it can easily be quantified. For teaching, five years old. Teaching, I can spend five years of teaching very badly. So do you want me to promote someone who has spent ten years teaching and teaching very badly? So what I'm lacking is kind of a trusted quantitative and qualitative criteria for the promotion of academic staff from one level to another. If I may conclude, in Uganda we've been being flexible enough to say that not only teaching but also community engagement. So we want community engagement to form uh, informed teaching, we want to research informed teaching. In fact, we have gone away to say, if you are an engineer, you have been supervising this, uh, this building, this high level building, then this is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have given it points. The same thing that is happening, I think, uh, I think in Kenya. So we have given it points so that everything that you do, uh, you do have points for uh, for promotion. It's not only research as it used to be, but you're going into an area of trying to weigh uh, community engagement, to weigh uh, teaching, uh, and as well as research. We are not saying that we are taking away research. Research is part, uh, teaching is part, community engagement is part. And we are going to say the way the engineers understand is not the same way the health professionals understand, it's not the same way the humanities people understand. We are trying to kind of segment for each one. For example, uh, when it came to community engagement, whereas in, a, in areas like the humanities, possible, it's not easy to, to engage into a project of, of one of, of, of say one million US dollars for the engineers, it is easy. Mm. So to become a lecturer, for example, we say an engineer, an engineer, one of the things that you need to have engaged in a project of one million US dollars. Yet when you come to other areas, one million US dollars maybe could be at the level of a professor. I don't okay. submit. All right. Prof, but, um, let me tweak the question in a different way so that we get another meaning. Would you suggest that um, perhaps maybe we have academics who are solely um, responsible for teaching and others also for, for research? Would you? Okay, I will try. I will attempt to answer that question. First of all, good evening, everybody. Good evening. In the interest of time, I'm not going to protocols. I will stress to the questions. Mm. Um, this session is about primarily about creating enabling environment for the law. Mm. And I will talk about the best of the Islam is doing about it before I go to the two questions. Okay. Um, the door was rolled out last year, August, thereabouts. Since then, we have done the following things. First, we have created a coordinating institution, the chair of which is in this room. Um, Dr. Dash, could you stand up? And then the members of that committee present. So we now have a university institution, and I must credit the this for this because she kept nagging me. She even came to Dar es Salaam. Mm. After our discussion, I told her, before you land in Nairobi, the committee will be in place, and it was. And here it is. Great. Secondly, and I think this must be news to Beatrice, to your ears. Now, the Senate of the University of Dar es Salaam has passed a policy requiring each and every member of the academic staff to undergo pedagogical training as a way. Great. And it will take place at two levels. One, upon recruitment, you will not be allowed to do any activities until you have done and passed that course. But also there will be one for continuous uh, training. So at the level of policy, we cannot go beyond that. The content of that training will be determined between our School of Education and our Center for Continuous Learning. And I think this is the opportunity now to institutionalize 
a dog. So the board is buckling your coat and we need a lawyer. So I cannot go beyond that because I really don't know about much about teaching. Maybe I need to be trained. So now it's an official policy of the University of Pakistan. Um, you must undergo pedagogical Great. Mm. training. Uh, we have also addressed some of the issues that have come up and, um, this morning, for example, about uh, funding some of our initiatives ourselves. We, the University of Desa, from this year, we have decided that we are establishing a research fund for our academic members of staff. We have started with half a million dollars. This is not from a donor. This is not from the government of the method of Tanzania. It is from internally generated resources. In fact, we gave out money this year. Half of them could not spend it. Mm. We had already issued them letters to bring, to, to bring back the money because they're not used to be, being given money by the university to do research. But now we have given them a period of grace. It was one year, now we have given them two years. We shall not spend it to bring it back. Our intention is to increase it gradually so that we can now start funding our own priorities. But we have also established a University of Dar es Salaam Merit Scholarship. Out of our own funds, we'll be funding 50 undergraduate students, 50 postgraduate students every year, so that we can bring the brightest to the institution who otherwise would not have access. Mm. So those are some of the small steps we are taking, but with, I think, a, a giant leap for, for pedagogy. Now, let me maybe come to the questions that have been put on the table. Mm. I didn't understand the first, the very first question, just like you. The second one clearly understood is that I think one of the ladies spoke mm -hmm. a lot about how we treat and value teaching vis-a-vis uh, -vis research in academic institutions, and I think she was entirely right. At the University of Islam, we have promotional criteria, but usually the way the points are distributed, and actually if they are drawn from the harmonized scheme of service for public universities. Mm. Uh, in Tanzania, teaching accounts for just about 20%. But, and that's not worse. The worst part of it, almost as long as you're on campus, everybody gets that 20%. Whether you are teaching, you are not teaching, nobody knows that. This is about the only circumstances under which you will not get those points mm. is if you're on secondment or you are not involved in teaching. However, we are changing that now. And I'm sure my staff don't even know this. <laughs> right now, although we have not reset the balance between research and, and teaching, we are in the process of developing criteria of how you earn those 20 to 30 percent depending on the level of promotion. And this is going to include, um, first of all, how you teach, but also how you continuously develop your pedagogical skills. And maybe I'll count on your support because it's me who is actually supposed to come up with those criteria because I'm the gatekeeper of all promotions that go to the relevant bodies. I think this may not address the question of balancing, but at least people start now valuing how they teach mm. because it may make all and make you as an academic. Now, lastly, let me come to your question. Should we have people who are essentially research academics, research lecturers, research professors, mm -hmm. and so forth, and people focus in teaching. We at the University of Islam, we once had that category. Okay. Yes, we had people who were just involved in research, and they would go up the ranks. I think we stopped this around the year 1998, and we required everybody to be engaged in teaching and research. In fact, people felt those who were just involved in the research were having a free ride. So, but recently we have just been brainstorming around, around that. Clearly, there are people who are very good lecturers, mm -hmm. but perhaps they are not so endowed in ability to conduct research. They shouldn't be made to suffer. However, as matters stand, we still require everybody to carry out research and to do teaching. Whether that will change, Maybe this is another food for thought for me. Stay with me all. I thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer it. Because <laughs> in my position, you see, this is a profession. And in any profession, there are occupational hazards. 
If you cannot take the heat, get out of the kitchen. I am ready for the question. All right, thank you very much. So let's listen to Dr. Julius and then we'll open the floor. <laughs> Yes, Dr. Julius. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know whether I would be much relevant to all the issues going on. But allow me to start by saying that I seem to have uh, a problem with the issue of discussion between teaching and research. Uh, because we give an impression that research or teaching is divorced from research. And if pedagogy is the science of teaching, then um, I'm a bit worried that we expect people who are at the university to be going to class and teaching badly or teaching well, and we want to promote them to be scholars in the university. I also have a problem when you talk of somebody teaching badly at the university level. My simple thinking when I joined the university of Stone, I was a lecturer, and I looked back at my um, a lecturer who taught me literature when I was an undergraduate, who came to teach theater of the absurd and spent two hours, rather than one hour, to teach us with the band is dead and Bordeaux uh, uh, is um, born out of my mind. And when we thought we were just starting, he told us I'm done. Since we are university students, I expect you to go and read. I've given you the key issues that you're supposed to because I'm a lecturer and I'm a trained teacher. Mm. So when I started working at the university, having taught in secondary school and also taught in a teacher training college, I found that my approach was different. And I would not consider my uh, professor who taught me literature a bad teacher. And therefore, if I go to teach the way I'm teaching in, the, in the school, then I will be considered a good teacher. I think this term is good, bad, and all that within a university context probably are things that we need to deal with a little more. Mm -hmm. And divorcing research from teaching, I think probably would also deviate us from what university is supposed to be. The issue of flexibility within the university, in my view, probably should be looked at in a broader context. I had one of the colleagues indicating that uh, in Europe, they are more flexible in Africa, we are not. Mm. But I think this could be starting from a lower level. And that a lot of what we do in the university sometimes is derived from our basic education structure. And the way that we, we, we have been um, probably brought up to deal with education matters. And I think that is why you find that currently there is a lot of pedagogical transformation across the world. Actually. If you attend some of the engagements across the world, you think there's a, a pedagogical revolution embedded within various education transformations across uh, many countries. I'll give you an example. For example, in Singapore, the way that they're understanding their pedagogy at the basic education links directly with what they're doing at the university. We attended a presentation of how they're trying to transform the basic education and how that is being reflected at the university level. And therefore, issues of call them 21st century skills, I think that's, that, that has now become almost a cliche. But there's a very tight link. Mm. Uh, if you look at a place like Finland, probably being indicated, plain left news that one, as providing one of the best curriculum within the basic education. And the fact that they want to go phenomena based kind of education system where learners go to school. There are no specific learning areas, you know, they discover for themselves and you take them along that line. If you look at the way they've structured the university engagement, again, you find that kind of freedom to explore embedded within the system. So, trying to look at universities in isolation without looking at what the countries are doing probably, will also create a disconnect because we are a product of a system down here. Mm. Uh, within the East African community, uh, the treaty that was passed in 2012, uh, Chapter 6, came up with a kind of education framework that tries to respond to the needs of what is happening across the world. And they went ahead and even developed um, what I would call basic education curriculum framework and tried to link it with what would, would be expected to happen in the university. But all these are political decisions, and how they are linked to the technical work done 
varies from one country to another. And it's on that basis that a lot of East African community countries now are changing to call it competence-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. Some people call it skills-based. You know, the names really sometimes is a very thin line between outcomes-based and, and competence-based. And it is on this basis, for example, that Kenya is, and, and Kenya, Uganda, I think Rwanda, where they went that way, South Sudan, all of us are moving towards that kind of try to make learning a little more flexible. But again, in this room, and I think even if you're not a teacher, you will agree, because research has proved that assessment predominantly determines how we teach in the classroom, whether at the university or not. If we engage learners at the university, then they have the knowledge where they will come to reproduce and the limit of that. That will determine how we train them. It will determine how sometimes we even do our curriculum. I happen to have participated, I would say unfortunately, in developing a curriculum in the university. What we did was very simple. We needed that course introduced. We Googled and studied what happens in several universities across the world. And we simply copy pasted it. But maybe it's in a manner that looks like it will be relevant. I now need a curriculum body that is dealing with the basic education curriculum. And therefore, I've had to read more about living the curriculum and transforming the curriculum and curriculum for the country. And with all due respect, I realized that the way that we were doing it at the university, or the way I expected it, was very superficial, mm. was too academic, was too theoretical. We never gave it my thought to even try to understand how the learner will relate to that curriculum. And the outcomes we expect out of the learner at the end of it all. Okay. So I think uh, these debates exist, but I know that uh, we are moving on. But again, as I lead the curriculum reform in Kenya, it is good to know that at a lower level, curriculum is more political than technical. Mm. The is a bit the technical. Sure. The political bit is the heavier. Marrying the two becomes very complicated. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Let me open the floor so that um, we will get the input from the house, especially the, the question is for us. How can we create um, an enabling, uh, and, sorry, enabling environment for, for PEDAL? And that should come from us to them. We should tell them what we think the policy makers should do. And so the floor is open. If you have any contribution, what must be done to ensure that we are still able to advance PEDAL in our universities? Um, and then also advance the continent as well. May I have um, people who already have one, Beatrice, two. If you want to speak, may I, three, four. Can the microphones go around? Beatrice, one. Please be specific. Your point must be clear. Yeah, Thank you. Um, we are having some conversations with the National Research Fund, at least uh, of Kenya, mm. that um, when um, lecturers apply for research funds, they should also be able to demonstrate that they have uh, innovated pedagogically. Because it's one thing to undertake research and another to teach researchers and mentor them. So I'd like your comment on that. Two. Yes. Thank you. I have heard the speakers say they have included some policies in their institutions for the PhD, for example, people who are getting enrolled to teach at the university undertake the mm. I'm wondering what methods you have to track if your policies are being implemented. Thank you. Three. Oh. Thank you. I want to comment on what to do to ensure that good teaching or effective teaching is encouraged in the university. And I think if we make if we make teaching a condition for promotion, I think that will help what Teda is doing. Uh, I also believe that a good teacher, a good lecturer, should also be a good setter. Uh, because you need
need some theoretical understanding. We are guided by some philosophy. Everybody, every teacher, every lecturer, mm -hmm. whether consciously or subconsciously, has a philosophy. So we need to bear that in mind. And I think if you bear in mind that one critical perspective of pedagogy is that it is a craft of teaching. I Meaning that it takes time, it takes practice, mm. it takes reflection to be uh, to master the skill of teaching. It's an evolving skill. And so I like to suggest that whatever we can do to ensure that teaching is a critical component for concentration in promotion, and that I believe, I know it's difficult, we're just, I was just discussing in my, in my book here that how do you, how do you assess teaching? And I think that we can begin to set some criteria. For example, we expect that as a foundation for teaching, a lecturer must have course outlines, for example. You must have course outlines for all your courses. Uh, number two, I believe that we can examine your questions, the nature of your questions and your market skills. And also, I expect that a good lecturer or a good teacher will engage in some kind of action or practical research to show that that lecturer or, or, or teacher is making a contribution what they are called public engagement or community engagement. I, I think that if we actually want to establish and encourage the relevance of Ella or what we are doing, we need to push for that. And I think that Ella is in a position to do that or, you know, that should be an association of the forum where we can encourage that. Okay. Otherwise, uh, people will get away with just anything. Thank you. All right. Four? No. Okay, he spoke your mind. Okay. Let me give you the opportunity. Thank you very much. I I'll come to you. Thank you very much. The last one. Yeah, uh, thank you. I want to give you a small uh, question in terms of uh, laying the emphasis on not um, the lecturers alone, but also the environment. If you look at most of the buildings where the students take the lectures, then the environmental psychologists will tell it. You see, most of the classrooms have open windows when they are. Mm. 
what they're doing is the color of the structure. So I don't think it's proper. They learn the value. And when you look at that, uh, it's supposed to be an enclosure where the attention of the students will be you know, so much focused on the lecture that the lecturer is delivering. And aside from that, most if you look, listen to what the keynote speaker, uh, most of the things he said in one the technology we are talking about is uh, highly technology group. See a situation where sometimes in the lecture rooms you don't have electricity. How do you, if you want to access it, for instance, uh, YouTube, how do you access it? It's not possible. Internet facilities are mounted. So these are some of the things I think uh, the university authorities should be uh, empowered to lay emphasis on to try to develop facilities to be able to align with the New developments in the language. Thank you. All right. We'll take the last. Thank you very much. I want to thank the panelists. I'm sorry for the Uganda matter as a university. My suggestion goes to our representative for the Uganda National Council of Education, Cyrus. And maybe also other councils here. <laughs> That's the, our council is called the Council of Education. But we seem to be more on regulation and oversight. I want to ask that you go beyond regulation and oversight and work with the university in some of some of finding finding some of these initiatives like in our paper. It is being funded by Fred Butler. How I wish our council came up with funds, budgeted, put it in the budget because you are the government question. Mm -hmm. Come up with a budget and fund the paper training especially where we are trying to formalize it that all lecturers in the university should have paper printing. So council should take it up and make it funded and find it to the university. Alright, thank you. Yeah, I want to make a comment and a question. The comment is this you see the we have our policy makers or policy actors here for like Nigeria we have a different perspective for this teaching and research. You know, we have research institutes mm. that actually prepare people to be promoted, even to professors, they don't teach. And we have uh, public institutions that combine both teaching and research. And my own uh, context, I believe that if you are not a good researcher, you cannot be a good teacher. Because you cannot do what you don't have. Because there are a lot of current issues, even in your area of specialization, that you need to actually have to be able to impact to students what is going on globally. And if you are not a researcher and you want people to be promoted just because they are teaching, they will teach, like you mentioned, obsolete things to the students because they are not correct. You know, so two of them go hand in hand. Yeah. What they are trying to say is about the policy makers, they should be a kind of portion of, you know, in the assessment of teaching, whereby that can motivate the lecturers. And this percentage is for teaching, you know, because of the new approach in um, student learner, you know, self -artists. Then the other portion for research, the other one for community service. But it's very difficult to separate them. And if you do that, if you do that in Uganda, in Tanzania, it is very, very difficult to be in Nigeria because it's political. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm a scholar. Uh, my comment will come to Dr. John. Is at KSD, where they are rolling out the CBC. I see the elements of uh, pedal within the CBC framework. Mm. I see the children who are now in grade 3 coming into university in about 10 years and I see that they, they change. The change that we are pedal is likely to bring in the university uh, arena is that lecturers will be more in touch with the learner's expectation, with the learner deeply uh, involved. Because we are looking at the CBC children coming to the university they have been learning through exposure, experiential learning. Then we, they come to the university, we go on our first in first lecture method. Already we have a disjoint mm. within that. So what I, I'd like to say is that uh, if 
This can be integrated in currently teacher learning, the teacher learning landscape. Mm -hmm. That is from primary teacher college into the secondary, the university, the technical colleges for teachers. Then we'll find a smooth transition. For me, Pedal uh, give us a, a precursor to the future of university teaching under the context of CBC. Thank you. Oh, okay, so uh, you'll be the, the last person. All right. Okay. I saw a lady's hand there. Okay, I'll give you the chance. Okay, my name is Luke. I'm from the University of Nairobi. I would like just to comment on the, the policy issue which I have had for a few people. Say that you want to make a legend, a goal or a requirement for each between. I think it's a good thing. And uh, I know most of you are supporting because maybe in the of pedagogy, and it's a good skill. But for the purpose of implementing the policy, I'm wondering uh, what you do if the people who engaged in pedagogy if it becomes a requirement. Because that means the people who engaged in pedagogy to doing a less units or less less uh, courses than others who are not doing PhD in pedagogy, and how are they going to compensate it? in order for them to graduate with the right credits or right way. Thank you. Violet from Moy University. My question goes back to, to the earlier speaker. I think it is in support to the earlier speaker. When we talk about uh, pedagogy at the university, there is assumption that uh, the moment we train in pedagogy, it translates to quality teaching. Mm. That is the assumption that we are putting, I think. Then the question is, what are some of the strategies and mechanisms that are being entrained to safeguard quality despite of pedagogy? Uh, another issue concerns my, my colleague who has just spoken a few minutes back that yes, for us to be able to benefit from pedagogy, there is an aspect of culture. From the primary up to university, the culture of teaching has been oriented towards the lecture method. Therefore, even when we have transition to the university, the students that we have at the university they have mindset with the lecture method. What are we going to do in order to change the culture, the thinking of our clients in order to embed pedagogy for quality teaching? Thank you very much. I think we'll give the opportunity to our panelists to address some of the questions. Prof, will you start? Well, thank you. I think most of the things are most of the comments, most of the things are actually comments. Mm. Well, asking for people who apply for research to show some level of pedagogical skill, I think is very important. The fact is that when you have research and it's not useful, you can pass it across, then it's useless. Mm. So I think I support that. Um, well, how do you teachers? Well, I know most Nigerian universities have this, just like he said, you have the research, you have community service, and then you have the um, teaching. And they put scores on all this. But with no, the most important thing there, in most cases, is research. Because for you to be called a professor, you should really profess something. And my take on this is this. If anybody should be promoted, you must have a certain level of teaching quality. Mm. No, in my university, for instance, students still assess us. Anonymous assessment. The quality assurance goes around, they give them papers, they will write about each teacher. And what is done eventually is that the comment are passed to the end of the department, who calls a departmental meeting, and they pass information to each of the teachers. And what they have seen is that what the students said about each teacher, they were right. They said correct things about them. So the head of the department now goes ahead to advise these teachers. So you know, the point is putting a scale on it may be difficult. Mm. Because student teachers who pass it uh, students very well, we always get good marks. And the ones that are stuck and stingy, like the Clinton. I'm 
study. Good. You know in America the scores are normally 80, 90. And the other way is the other way. So the other ones that are stingy will always be rated low. But of course, just getting comment about them about each teacher is normally very important. And then in our own case, I think we have the class size, the number of units, the number of years we have taught and things like that add up to your teaching whatsoever. And of course, you must have that level of score before you can be considered for promotion at all. Mm -hmm. um, in Nigeria, recently I just passed, I got a WhatsApp from the Umbo Foundation, the network in Nigeria that talks about the uh, promotion guide being developed by NUC. And I ordered it to our own academic platform. So people are actually working to make sure that things are normal. Our classroom environment is a big one. Um, most public universities are funded by governments. Unfortunately, in Africa, most government um, the policies are what is going to bring, bring gain on time. If you invest in education, you may not get the result in five years. And you want to do things that you will see almost immediately. So the percentage of uh, the budget in budget, these days you have six, eight, nine, ten percent. Not all the cases that UNESCO suggested. So now the problem is you want to make news, uh, you want to make environment need, you want to have this kind of element in class. This kind of element in class, I think, is nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. But to okay. make the classes clean, I'm sure it's something that we should work on to make sure that um, people can have a good environment to learn. Then there's this issue about having research, um, the question you ask, having professors of research. We have it in other places, mm -hmm. and how to co teach. You know, in the university, we actually have some institutes. They, they are embedded as research fellows, and you have research fellows. But once you are called a lecturer, the expectation is that you will teach and you do research. And just like email comments, we have research institutes where you can go to and become a chief research fellow. It's only when they come to university that they are giving professorship. But I think I started giving professorship. So, Okay. It's possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think you were just on uh, a few issues that were directed to me. Uh, uh, first of all, the issues of teaching versus research, teaching alone, uh, research alone. Yes, in developing countries, they can afford that. But I don't know whether the developing country can afford that kind of lifestyle. Where you have someone doing a research alone and somebody is 40. I think we, for now, we may be heading there, but I think for now, we need someone who, is, who can contribute to, uh, to both, because we don't really have that capacity of kind of super specialization. Somebody talked about the PhD program that requires pedagogy. Uh, how do you track that? Maybe uh, I just need to give a little bit of background here. Uh, when you get a PhD, at least in my country, the first things are more welcome. They give you a class. That's the practice. So when people see you with the PhD, they, they, they really think that you are the right material to stand in the classroom. So for us seeing that almost all people who are, who are getting PhD in the next uh, so, so years will end up in the classroom, we think that we, we need them to be prepared. The preparation may not be adequate, but it can uh, be better than nothing. It's a good, it could be a kind of good starting point which you can uh, build on. How do we track? How do we track that? Uh, we at the National Council for Education, we are building self-regulating universities. Uh, we are creating a program where we have created this course. We kind of have a trust that you as a university you will uh, fulfill what you have promised in a great program. But we even go beyond that. We do regular monitoring. We interact with the students, we ask questions. And so if we find out that you have not done what you promised make a program document, basically we get to you, we get to you, and if you cannot listen, then we can evoke a little bit of idea. But for my dad, it reach, uh, uh, it does not reach uh, at that level. How do you encourage good teaching in a university? I still can give my uh, my experience. I did. I was a lecturer at Macquarie University before I went to uh, to the National Council for Education. And I remember 
in my day they used uh, once once in a while so it was used to evaluate us. Mm. But these evaluations did not uh, impact anything on my promotion. They were put aside and then the promotion on another way. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the questions. I will not go to the questions which are already been answered. Mm adequately by my colleagues, so I'll answer one or two questions. The first one was um, by Beatrice. You indicated that you are now engaged with the Council for National Research of Kenya. I'm not so sure I'm getting the name correctly. To include pedagogical training requirements in giving grants and whether this is a good idea which should be emulated elsewhere. Personally, I would, I would say it depends on the nature of the applicants. Certainly for some, it's a good idea. For example, people who are applying to do PhDs, people who are academic members of staff, I think those should have a pedagogical content, uh, I mean, component. After all, what is doctorate? Etymologically, the origin of the term doctor simply means license to teach. Licentia docendi in, in Latin. It was first used at the University of Bologna in Paris in the 13th century. So if you are awarded a doctorate, it meant you are licensed to teach in this area. Maybe that's going back to the future. So I would support at least for those categories. Others it would be on a case by case basis. There was another question, I or comment on question, that our teaching right now is focused on a, a lecture method uh, culture both with the students and lecturers. But sometimes if you don't give lectures, even lecture notes, students ask you, so that you laugh. Because they you shout and then give the notes. What should we do? What should we do to change that culture? I think there's something we can do. We should probably consider looking at our curricula and changing their, uh, uh, their approaches. At the University of Islam, we have started that. In fact, we have started with the School of Education. This very year, we have overhauled our BA education and MSc with education uh, to change them from being um, lecture center to student center. Because giving lectures, usually you are a teacher oriented. But once this program becomes student oriented, there will be less of lecturing and there will be a lot of student involvement. Maybe others might also wish to consider. We started with education because they are the experts. If it works out well, we can roll it out to other units. Okay. Other questions have already been answered. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know time is running out. I think culture is something that takes a process to change. I think he's already mentioned what we're talking about in first year the lesson. Cradle is music to our ears in terms of the reform that we are undertaking because it means we already have uh, a team that will be preparing to receive what we're already introducing, basic education. Uh, yes, we are, we are in Kenya, we have developed the basic education curriculum framework. Uh, we have the privilege that we also develop curriculum for uh, teachers below the university. And this year, we are not admitting any teachers for training uh, because we don't need to train them on what I would call the, the current curriculum, so that admission is stopped until we have the new curriculum ready that corresponds with the changing times. Mm. And yes, for the universities, that is why a task force was gazetted last Friday. If you look at the membership of that task force, you see that a lot of them are professors from the university, including the Commission for University Education, to try and help us bridge that gap and see how what we are doing now can be made better, but most critically linked to what is happening at the university. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shall we put our hands together for our panelists?